Hi, this is Sean Mosh from SeanMosh.com. I love to teach people how to use their Cricut and Cricut Design Space. I feel like if you understand how to use the software, you can do anything you can imagine. Some people would be surprised to find out that I use Cricut Design Space for free every single day. Yes, I do have to pay for some of the Disney images that I use, but even if you paid for Cricut access through the membership, you would still have to pay for those Disney images on top of your access subscription. Now, there are some features that are exclusive to Cricut access members. Today, I want to talk about the new separate colors to layer option when you upload a design. Don't worry, you can still upload and save as a cut file or upload and save as a print and cut file. The screens just look different, but I'm going to walk you through everything. I'm going to click upload and then click upload images. And I'm going to go to where I have some images saved. Once I click on the image I want to upload, you'll see it on the screen. I don't even really know why we have this screen. Just click continue. Now, if I paid for Cricut access at this point, the background would automatically remove, but there's a way you can do this on your own. It's really hard, so pay attention. You scroll down here to where it says manual. Oh, that's it. There's no, nothing else. If you want to, you can modify the color tolerance. So for an image like this, that's just black and white, I can change it to two. And that kind of helped so that the lines weren't as grainy. Then I'm going to click on the select tool. Some people call this the magic wand because that looks like a magic wand icon. And then I'm just going to click. You can see that took away that entire section of the background. That's it. That's how hard it is. Now I can preview this. That's how it's going to cut. This next part is kind of going to go into the convert to layers piece. If I kept going with the same idea and clicked inside all of these sections of the puppy dog, what I'm going to end up with is just the outline of him. I'm going to zoom in here. So I want to get all of these little pieces. All right, I think I got it all. Let's zoom back out. So now if I hit preview, you can see it's showing that outline. I'm going to use apply and continue. This is where that whole new convert to layers feature comes in. If you pay for access, you can use this tool to break the colors into different layers. Remember, there were no colors except for black and white in this design. This one is what you would choose to save as a cut file. When we used to upload, you'd get a choice of save as cut file or save as print then cut. This is what used to be save as cut file. Over here is just a flat graphic. There's no layers. This is what used to be called save as print then cut. All right, we're going to click the single layer and hit continue. And I'm going to hit upload. And it comes in really big, so let's scale that down. So now I'm going to show you how to convert this black and white outlined image into layers. First, I want to determine how many layers I'm going to want. I'm going to want black. I think I'll make this puppy dog brown. I might do his nose and tongue in pink. And then I'm going to want white for his eyes. I might do another color for inside his mouth. So that's six layers. So that means I need six colors. I can either right click on this and duplicate this way, or at the top of the layers panel, I can hit duplicate. So I want a total of six of these puppies because I'm going to do six colors. If I align them and center them on top of each other, now they're all ready to go and lined up. I also like to name my layers. So this is going to be the white layer for the inside of his eyes. You just double click on the text in the layer to change it to whatever you want. So I'm going to name it white and change the color to white. Now you see it changed the whole outline to white. This is where the magic happens. I'm going to use the contour tool 
And when I click on this very first image that shows the entire puppy dog, watch what happens over here. He's all white on the inside instead of the outline. So now I can start to turn off all these other pieces. And all I'm leaving white are those little dots inside his eyes. All right, let's do the brown because I think you'll see the most impact with that. All right, let's use contour. And I'm going to find the one that looks like the full puppy dog. Because when I click on that one, see how it changed everything from an outline of brown to the interior pieces are now brown. Now I can just look at it and say, okay, well, I don't want his tongue brown, so I'll click on that to turn that off. Whoops. And if you do what I just did of accidentally clicking on something and turning the outer outline back on, you can also go to this section and find the pieces. So this piece looks just like that piece. So I can turn that off from here. I actually wanted that one on because that's outside his mouth. I'm going to make this one pink and use contour, find the big puppy and turn that off. And you see how that changed everything and flipped it. So now I just have to find those other pieces. And then this one, I'm going to make the inside of his mouth a different color. I don't like the gray. Let's go to a creamy. That's better. And the more I look at it, I'm not liking the nose being the same. I decided to tweak a couple things with the colors on this. So I'm speeding up the video because the process is still the same. You're using contour in the lower right hand corner of the screen to turn on and off different sections. I really encourage you to find some coloring book style images, upload them, and then use this contouring process to start to make different colored layers. Once you get the hang of it, it's really fun. And it just opens up what you can do with Design Space and how you can change images. So that's one way you can make layers. I'm now going to group these together so I can resize it all together and just move that puppy over here. Another way to do layers is right when you upload. And what if you have an image that already has colors in it? I'm going to click upload and then upload image. And I think I'll use this puppy dog. And I will click continue. And let's remove that background. So if you look at this, that's basically everything that is that dark blue or black. I'm trying to figure out which one it is, except for, I need to remove these. Because now if I make another layer that is the brown, I can just lay those right over the top. So I'll click apply and continue. I want to make this a single layer. And this is going to be the back piece. That came in big, but that's okay. All right, let's upload, upload image, pick the exact same image, select, remove the background. And this time I want to just keep everything that is brown. So I'll get rid of this white inside here, get rid of the pink of the tongue, and then select the blue. It's kind of a blue. It's kind of a gray. I'm not really sure. All right. You can see it left some speckly stuff in there. I'm going to use the eraser tool to get rid of that. And you can make the eraser bigger, but then you have to be more careful that you don't hit 
the parts that you want to keep. I will probably speed up the video at this point so you don't have to watch all of this in real time. Ooh. Shit. You know, this might be a good time to mention. I do one-on-one -on -one classes. So if you want to really get into Design Space and learn all of my tips and tricks, go to shawmash.com, click on classes, book something. Once I think I have everything removed, I like to check it by clicking that preview. And if there were any little stray spots, those would really show up. One thing I did just notice is those are connected. So let's zoom in there and make this smaller. Apply and continue, single layer. This one's gonna be brown or tan, tan, let's go tan. Change it to a tan. So for the last two layers or colors on this one, I could actually do, use duplicate and contour. So I'm gonna turn off this layer and go duplicate, I'm gonna duplicate twice. One of these will be pink for the tongue and the other will be white for part of his paws. So, oops. I can select all of those and go align so they're centered. All right. This is the first one is the pink. So let's contour, turn off that, and then turn off these inner pieces, leaving the tongue turned on. I could have also done upload and just done the tongue. This is the white. And actually, on the original design, this was see-through. I could make this white also, but I would have to do some tweaking because you can't use contour on this one because that gap is there. And let me show you what I mean. If I use contour on this and try to say, hey, fill this in, see how it, it doesn't let me do that because there's that gap between these two pieces. So I'm gonna turn off some of the other pieces so I can just focus on this one. And I'm gonna turn that back on just for now. How to identify this kind of stuff is what I teach in my Teach Me Cricut Design Space course. Let's just use a little oval. doesn't really matter because I'm going to make it so small. Like smaller than that. Now I can click on that oval, hold my shift key and click on the white piece. And I am going to use combine and weld it together. So now when I zoom back out and click on contour, now I can have just that piece filled in. And why is the uh, tan not lined up? Because, <laughs> because I move things. But that's okay. Just do this. Move that back into place. One thing I do need to fix is his eye. So I'm going to make another copy of the black. And I'm going to use contour and just turn off everything except for his eye. There, and now you have a layered puppy. This feature is also available in the Cricut app. I did a whole video showing the process on my iPad.
Let's watch that now. In Cricut Design Space, I'm going to click the Upload button, and then I'm going to say Select from Photo Library. And I'm going to use this cute little bee. So let's first look at this bumblebee. He has five colors in him. This is important to remember. All right, so click this little X because we don't want to use that background remover. And then we're going to click Apply. Now it's asking us, do we want to make a multi-layered design? And yes, that's what we're here to test out, the new multiple layer function when uploading images to Cricut Design Space. Now I'm going to click the Next button in the upper right corner. And let's click on Check It Out because in the next screen that comes up, you're going to have choices. You can have a clip art image, or you could upload an actual photograph style image. You can then choose the output. So you do you want it to be a stacked design, or do you want it to be sliced so that it's like puzzle pieces that go into each other? Now you can see from the green check marks, I have clip art and stacked selected. For this next part, we want to go to the bottom and click on layers. This is where that number five comes into play. So it's literally asking us, how many colors do you want me to break this image up into? And since we know five is our magic number for this design, I'm just going to click on the five. And then you see the little green check mark show up. And then I can hit the next button. So now this is showing me if I have everything stacked, this is what my design looks like. I can then go click on the next button over to see each individual layer separated. That's kind of a nice feature. But what if I change my mind and I decide I want this sliced? Well, let's hit the edit button and I can now change from stacked to slice. Pick the five again and then hit next. And now when I look at all of these pieces separated, I can see how there's not whole bumblebee shapes. They're all sliced into their separate colors and I would have to puzzle piece them back together to make my finished image. So what else can you do with this? I wanted to check out what was underneath the advanced section because I was hoping this would really help me to refine and define my image. So let's just click on advance and I can change the smoothness, reduce the noise, which is kind of like the blurriness of things. And really when I made that high, I didn't like the end results. So play around with this if you want and change the settings, but really increasing the resolution or the noise reduction didn't do anything that great in my opinion. I do want to mention this function. You can play around with it and look at it, but to actually complete the design and put it on your canvas, you have to be a paying member of Cricut Access, which I am not. That is why I want to show you a free way to make a layered image. So let's go over to a website I like to use called PNG to SVG. Right off the top, they're going to show you if you upload a photograph, here's the result you're going to get on the right hand side. It's trying to break up the colors into different layers. So you're not going to get something that looks like a photograph. And I think that is one thing that a lot of people just don't understand. So let's scroll down until we get to the drag and drop. And I'm going to click on photo from library. And then I'm going to go grab the exact same bumblebee that I used in design space. So here he is. He still has five colors. Same little bee. Let's scroll down here. And in the first left hand side, it's looking at the number of colors that it wants to use. I don't know where it's getting the brown from. There's pink for the cheeks, but it's not picking that up. So I played around with the colors and I tried adding more colors and I ended up just going with four. 
It just won't have the pink cheeks. So now I'm going to click the generate button and you're going to see that it's going to generate the output on the right hand side. So the bee without the cute little pink cheeks, that's fine. Now I click download SVG and you're going to see the little pop up on my iPad that says it's downloading this. It's going to my downloads folder. I can even click open in and it will take me right to the folder so I can see the actual SVG file or I can open it in my downloads. There it is. That's the SVG file it created. Now we got to get that into Cricut Design Space. So let's open up Cricut Design Space and click upload. Then we're going to choose browse files because remember this time we're not picking an image from our photographs. We're going and finding the SVG file that we just created and downloaded from the PNG to SVG site. It looks like I actually downloaded it twice. So just select one of those. Now you have to name it. So type in a name. I'm just going to call this B and then I'm going to click the upload button in the upper right hand corner. And then you can see my B comes in to the design space campus. Now you might be wondering why there's the white background. So let's click on the layers button and look, there are four layers over here and the white one is the white background, but also the white of the inside of the eyes. So if I unselect all of them and then just select the white layer, I can delete that. And technically he doesn't have white eyes or white dots in his eyes anymore. What you're seeing is the white through the opening of the black. That's okay. So the point of this whole video was to show you there are free resources out there where you can actually make a better quality layered image. Now, since I know someone's going to ask, are these SVG files? The answer is no. Even when Cricut Design Space put out their updates, they said you can convert and upload multicolored images into separate layers. If they were giving us the ability to make SVG files in Cricut Design Space, they would have said that somewhere in their information. These images cannot be exported from Cricut Design Space. So no matter what file type they really truly are, they're still only Cricut images if you can only use them with your Cricut machine. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I love to hear from you.